What's up, guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Red Dead Redemption 2 is out today. We're going to talk a bit about some of the reviews because, uh, well, we might have found the game of the year. Seriously, we're going to go talk about the Metacritic because it is technically a historic thing happening right now with this game. And uh, I got it last night, and I'll be playing it, and then probably talking a bit on the podcast about it, and then going forward with some impressions on it. I'm very excited to get into it. And then also, we saw uh, cell phones in China go a little further to copy the Switch and kind of the ideas around it. Yeah, it was pretty interesting to read up online about this and see how people were reacting to it. And as always, guys, if you like these news updates and shows, make sure to hit the like button. It does help out with YouTube. First, let, let's start with Red Dead Redemption 2. If you missed it on Metacritic, last I saw, it was a 98 on the Xbox One, a 97 on the PS4. There appear to be uh, more reviews in for the PS4 version. The Xbox One version, I, I think, makes sense for it to be rated a bit higher as it runs better. And it does technically put out a native 4K image. Yeah, for Red Dead Redemption 2 on the Xbox One X, which actually makes me uh, a little happier going into the next generation, thinking, okay, we're getting something like a Red Dead Redemption 2 in native 4K. You know, if we get systems that are a bit more powerful than these, then yeah, something like 4K 30 or 4K 60 native should be doable. So that, that does make me happy to see that that is the case there. It's a lower resolution on the PlayStation 4 Pro, as we expect. It's weaker. And then, uh, well, apparently the original Xbox One is, uh, apparently it's blurry. So <laughs> take that as you will. It looks like it's going to be an awesome game. But to see it at a 98 on the Xbox One and then a, a 97 on the PlayStation 4, this very well, depending on where the reviews come in, some could actually come in at 100 and push it up and keep it there. This could be the best rated game in the last 10 years. The last time we had one rated this high was, I think, Grand Theft Auto ended up being it. If you look on the all-time charts, yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2 could be the best rated game of this generation and even in the last decade. Now, that means that games like God of War and Spider-Man, yeah, those are going to get run over more than likely we're looking at what's probably going to be voted as Game of the Year. Like, again, I have to play through it and see what I think of it overall, even with impressions, but based on reviews and what a lot of people in the media are saying about it right now, this looks to be the game of the generation, and uh, it might be worth looking into. It sounds like the campaign's very long. It sounds like the immersion levels in the game, like actually being immersed in the world, is massive. Attention detail is huge, so excited. Definitely excited to get into it. Oh, and get this. Somebody streamed on YouTube, yeah, that... It takes like an hour and 20 minutes to install this game, at least on the PS4. Now, I, of course, am getting on the Xbox so I can see if there's a difference. But in, in the past, I have noticed that it's faster to uh, install stuff on the PS4 than it is on the Xbox. So I'm bracing for that possibly, you know, hour, 40 minute install time there. Great. Uh, this was actually done by Geek Aloud. They actually streamed the whole thing. They literally just left the PlayStation up while the bar filled up to show everyone how long it takes to, uh, you know, install. It's an interesting idea, I guess, but at least told us how long that is. Of course, you have a data disk, and then you have the play disk that has more data on it. It's just a ton of stuff to install, and the disk drives are relatively slow uh, Blu-ray drives. But there you go. At least if you get it physically, you literally have everything in front of you physically. It's not like, say, uh, a Switch game that come out where you get a little bit on the cartridge, then you got to download a ton from the server. Most of it's there. Mine is probably a day one update, but to play the game, you just, you put the disc and you go. I actually like that more than having to download from a server. Also, we were talked about Labo integration with full games. Well, we talked also at one point about Demo actually adding the piano support for Labo, and they've actually done that now in version 1.4. We're seeing a screenshot here where, yes, they have not only added the Toy-Con collection that adds the piano as a usable control scheme here, so you can just sit there and use the piano for the rhythm-based game. It appears they've also added uh, some exclusive music tracks, so a music pack, specifically even for the piano. That's actually pretty awesome. I like the integration of the piano and rhythm-based games. It, obviously, it makes a ton of sense, right? I mean, I guess technically if you have a racing game and you have the bike part, you could technically add that in as well. Or if we ever see like, like Sega Bass Fishing or something come back, uh, they, they could technically, you know, integrate the uh, the fishing rod. But there you go. We do have some Labo integration in some full games. Outside of Nintendo products, we've seen integration into Mario Kart already. But to see a third party use it to that their advantage with the rhythm game is pretty cool. All right, guys, some quick news. Otherwise, jump into some of the bigger stuff. We're starting with that cell phone right away. 
So get this, they're a company in China. Actually, I'm just gonna show you a cell phone here and you can kind of take a look at it because there's a lot of shots. This is from pocketnow.com. They had all the details on this phone. It's from a company called, I assume it's uh, Xiaomi. Anyway, they put out a phone called the Black Shark Hilo, and this phone is a beast. We're gonna get that out of the way now. It's, it's a very capable phone, and it's actually not terribly expensive at its starting price of about $460. Now, it does go up to $600, Again, though, cell phones are fairly expensive. Here are the, ac the actual specs of it. Here, it's using a Snapdragon 845, which is an octa-core, so you have two dual sets of quad-core. Generally, uh, you have one that's more of a power saving and one that's more high performance. You have the Adreno 630 GPU. And what's pretty funny here is they have dual pipe liquid cooling, which I think they're kind of dressing that up with some marketing terms because after seeing some of the imagery they use for it, it just reminds me of, like, cell phone, or I'm sorry, uh, laptop cooling systems because those technically have liquid in them and that helps it to uh, transfer heat quickly. But that's kind of where we are now. We basically have, uh, you know, pipes, copper pipes in our cell phones because they're pretty much like small laptops basically at this point. Uh, just basically a six inch, they have 6.01 is a six inch uh, AMOLED LCD or AMOLED screen, which is pretty awesome. 1080 by 2160. So this is a pretty high resolution there. And it has either six, eight or 10 gigabytes of low power DDR4X memory, 128 or 256 gigabyte. And the biggest thing here, also the battery is 4,000 milliamp hour. I feel like that's, yeah, that might be a little small. Um, we'll see what the battery tests are. This is obviously uh, targeted towards the Chinese market for cell phones. I think Arena Valor is probably their biggest thing they're pushing it towards, but this is designed to be a gaming phone. How do we know that? Well, look at the accessory that they are Putting with it, does that remind you of anything? Because I look at that and yeah, they, they're, they are Joy-Con controllers essentially. Now the one on the right is kind of different. It has like the, the, the pad almost, but the one on the left looks pretty much exactly like a Joy-Con controller. The way it works, they seem to have uh, basically a case that goes around the phone and then you have those that slide on, similar to how the Joy-Con controllers from Nintendo work. And you're off and running. You have a cell phone that has physical buttons and everything. Now, is there much that can happen here from Nintendo's part? Probably not. It's based in China. Uh, I don't think Nintendo would do very well to sue them over or anything. Remember, Nintendo was fighting their own battle against Game Vice for them apparently, apparently ripping off their detachable controllers. So it's not like Nintendo is really in a place to then go and say, you took our design of detachable controllers that we were fighting against Game Vice for apparently taking their design. Even, you know, you go either way with it. I, I get it. it, Game Vice doesn't look anything like Nintendo's really, but this looks very much like Nintendo's Joy-Con. They couldn't have put a D-pad on there. Like, they they copied the four single buttons. They couldn't have copied a D, or done a D-pad instead. The shape, obviously, around the outside looks different, right? But the four button, the joystick, the two shoulder buttons, yeah, it's... It's very similar. I, I guess you could look at this and say, well, I guess Nintendo's on to something with this design. Cell phone manufacturers are grabbing it and using it. But again, they kind of need the software to push this. This is a very powerful phone, very capable phone, but you're not playing, like I said, Breath of the Wild Doom or, or Mario Odyssey or soon to be Smash Bros on it. And yeah, it's a cell phone that's gonna be geared more towards the, the China market that would be pushing things like Arena Valor, where they're really into those cell phone games. So it makes sense there. It's just, you look at it and you say, I mean, I guess it's working. Other companies are copying it and that's usually how you know it's working. It's not gonna affect Nintendo sales, obviously, because they're not gonna push big games and it's probably gonna stay in China for the most part where Nintendo's not at all in. I mean, they're kind of in Shenzhen, but that's the whole thing anyway. But at this point, there you go. Cell phone manufacturers, they they like what we're, they're seeing with the Switch. We already had uh, Huawei compare their phone to the Switch. They're, this company is now technically copying the idea of the Joy-Con with the detachable controllers, even the shape and buttons placement and everything. So uh, I guess Nintendo's doing things right and cell phone companies, well, they're noticing. Next up, let's talk about Team Sonic Racing. It was a game that's supposed to come out this winter. We didn't hear anything about it yet. And it was getting a little concerning. I, I started thinking about it. I was like, they kind of need to tell us a release date, right? Is this December or what's going here? Because... Of course, Sumo Digital is making it, and I thought about it, and I was like, well, they're also doing Crackdown 3, and I bet you right now they are getting pushed heavily by Microsoft to get this thing done, because it keeps getting delayed. Do they really want to delay it again? Probably not. And it looks like Team Sonic Racing is going to fall to next year. It sounds like it's going to uh, go past when Crackdown 3 was coming out, so I feel like Sumo Digital is just really focusing on that game right now. Team Sonic Racing is actually getting pushed to May of 2019, so if you're looking forward to driving around in a car as Sonic, which is weird because I think Sonic's supposed to be able to run faster than that. 
Well, you got to wait till May. Uh, of course, that's coming out on all platforms and everything. But again, I, I just think Crackdown 3 kind of overshadowed even this project. And they're all hands on deck trying to get this thing done. Crackdown 3, though, is me playable at XO uh, in, in a couple weeks, actually. So we'll see what kind of progress they've made. But Crackdown 3 is a very, very big project, much larger than something like Sonic. And I think they just had to choose. That's just kind of the way it was. But According to Sega, they released this statement. During this initial time, Sega and Sumo Digital will continue to hone the title to enhance the player experience to ensure Team Sonic Racing delivers the best gameplay experience possible. So it just sounds like it just it, it wasn't ready. Again, things maybe were falling behind schedule and rather than try to either hire more people or maybe even to do crunch. Eh, we'll just, we'll wait till next year. Uh, Crackdown 3 has to get out first and that's what Sumo is putting a lot of their people on probably, so. Well, there we go. We'll wait till May and uh, you'll be able to get Team Sonic Racing. Next up, let's talk a bit about Ukulele. I actually haven't talked about that game in a while. It's pretty much come and gone. We did like the physical version I know was, was released or being released for the Switch, which is pretty cool. Uh, but there was one mode that was technically promised and they were still working on and they released a trailer for it yesterday. It went over about as well as I thought it was going to go after they kind of talked about a screenshot. That was their 64-bit mode. Now, before before you see this video, kind of think about what, what you're picturing here for a Nintendo 64 64-bit version. Are you kind of picturing like kind of the polygon look, you know, where it was like you didn't have obviously a lot of detail in the characters and everything it was all blocky, like a Banjo-Kazooie or like a Mario 64? Well, if, if that's what you're thinking, uh, that, that's not what they went for here. It, it, you're seeing it here, it looks very much like a low resolution scan line kind of filter. It's almost like they made it blurry rather than sharp with those kind of polygon type details. Yeah, it's not going over very well either with a lot of people frustrated in the comments and the like to dislike ratio kind of showing the frustrations. I think people were really expecting it to look very, very much like a Nintendo 64 game. And that's just not in the cards, whether it's because it would be a lot of work to go back and do that and change it up and, and I guess fix it up to that point, fix it up, technically you're downgrading it, right? You're demaking it. It might've been too much to do. And they thought, well, maybe we can get this, these filter settings to look just right. So if you squint really hard, it looks like a 64 game. That's probably the best they can do other than go back and rebuild most of the game. So it looks that way. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below, because this is very controversial on their YouTube video with comments and everything ranging back and forth about people being frustrated. Some people fine with it because they understand it probably wasn't going to get the attention it needed to get to that N64 level. And our last bit of news, let's talk about a game that's actually going to the Switch after it came out on the Xbox, PS4, and PC. I remember playing it on the Xbox. That's Vampire. It actually launched, I believe it was over the summer. I remember playing it. I liked the idea of the game. I thought it was kind of neat, uh, but there were some weird bugs and glitches that I ran into at the time. So I was like, eh, this is, I guess this is okay. The idea was cool. I liked some of the, I liked the setting a lot, right? Kind of that, that gothic kind of setting. And the idea was you basically played as someone who was turned into a vampire and it was an action RPG. There was full skill trees and everything. And there was one really cool mechanic where you would actually take people who are integral to the story and you had like a whole story tree and everything about who you keep alive or who you wanted to uh, kill and drink their blood. Because when you would do that, you would take them out of sight of everyone. You would pretty much uh, kill them, drink their blood, and you would power level. So you'd gain tons of skill points, get very powerful. And at that point, it'd be a little easier, but you can also start to damage and ruin some of the storyline that way. It was kind of an interesting idea. But the game itself was okay, I think. Anyway, it is coming to the Switch. Uh, Focus Interactive actually announced it in their financial report, talking about how it was going to be going to the Switch after it did fairly well. It was successful enough, like it sold enough to where uh, do, uh, Don't Not Entertainment and Focus Home Interactive could say, yeah, we can we can make this work. Uh, we didn't lose money on it, but we see some, obviously some potential moving it to the Switch. So we'll see how it runs there again. Uh, that's the one iffy thing. I ran into a lot of bugs and weird glitches. So maybe they've polished it enough now that it's been out for a little while to bring it to the Switch. It'll also be interesting to see how it runs as there were some frame rate issues a lot of people reported with the Xbox One version. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newsway. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it is Red Dead Redemption 2 and you see the reviews out there. You still have to play it, I assume, but 
Let me know what you think about this and, and if this is going to be probably the favorite, the front runner for Game of the Year. Keep in mind, it still has to go up against God of War and Spider-Man and then maybe a few others. God of War and Spider-Man are the ones that stick out. But let me know what you think about that. I think it'll be very interesting to see that award show with those big three kind of going up against each other for that. Also, let me know what you think about the, uh, the company out of China that's making the cell phone with the attachment that looks very much like a Joy-Con. Do you think that's flattering for Nintendo or do you think Nintendo should be annoyed and frustrated by that? I mean, if you come up with an idea, yeah, people are bound to copy it and use it for themselves. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.